Steve may very well be the most complex character in Smash Ultimate. The potential of the character is only limited to your own creativity. Steve can manipulate the game and the stage into his favor by setting up deadly ledge traps and rack up tons of damage with his juggle combos. He is also a great ledge guarding character with fast and potent aerials and can go super deep off stage to secure kills. However, Steve requires a lot of time and resources in game to be able to play at maximum efficiency. Steve will struggle against characters who can defy his slow paced gameplay and long setup times. If the opponent is in control at the pace of the match, Steve will become almost helpless. Steve struggles the most against rushdown characters, characters with long range, as well as projectiles. In this video I will show you the basics of Steve and try to make this incredibly complicated character more comprehensible. I will break down how each move works, their uses, and key strategies when playing with or against the character. I put a ton of time and effort into this video, so please consider subscribing, it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Only 5% of my viewers are actually subscribed, and it's the best way to help support my small channel. Other than that, be sure to also join my Discord server, which the link is in the description, as I may ask Discord members to be in future videos. Without further delay, let's get right into the guide. As a side note, I'll be covering Steve's resources for when playing on an Omega or Battlefield stage. When it comes down to normal stages, the resources will depend on the stage. Regardless of the stage, you will always get an equal amount of redstone, iron, gold, and diamonds. I will refer to these as special materials. However, base materials such as stone and wood vary on the stage. For example, you can only get wood on Smashville or stone on Pokemon Stadium. Steve wields a sword, axe, and pickaxe as his primary melee attacks. These tools can all be crafted into five different materials. Wood, stone, gold, iron, and diamond. Each type has different damage output and durability. Wood has a 1.0 damage multiplier, as it is the base weapon class. Gold does the same amount of damage but has faster swings, however it is also the least durable. Stone does 1.1 times damage, iron does 1.2 times damage, and diamond does 1.35 damage, with the highest durability and damage. Optimally your goal will be to reach diamond, as it deals the most damage and has the most kill power. Iron will be the next best since it's easier to obtain and has no drawbacks. At the start of each stock, Steve will start with wood tools. When it comes to which class Steve will craft, it comes down to what resources are available. When first mining, Steve will gain one stone block to craft stone tools. However, after mining one more block, he will get an iron ingot. It costs four ingots to craft iron. This is indicated in the resource bar. If Steve does not have enough iron, he will default to stone or wood depending on what you have. After mining for long enough, you will obtain gold, which takes priority over iron even though it's weaker. Finally, you will obtain diamond after mining for an extended period of time. Diamond is only used for crafting tools. I will refer to the order of resources mined as the resource queue. The resource queue will continue until you reach diamond, then the queue starts over. The queue will also reset if you lose a stock. Aside from that, the queue will continue from wherever you left off during that stock. This means that so long as you are consistently mining the short bursts, you will get all the resources you need, including diamond. This is Steve's resource bar. At the start of every match, Steve will start with the same amount of dirt, wood, and iron. When initially mining, you will notice that the iron section begins to fill quickly. However, despite it looking like you are losing dirt, it is in fact still there. The dirt portion is just being condensed in your bar. You will be indicated that you are losing resources when you see resources despawning behind you. When using certain moves such as TNT or minecarts that use any base materials, it is important to know that it will always consume dirt first, followed by wood, and then stone, and lastly iron. You never want to have to use iron as a base material because it is too valuable for Steve's other moves. Gold and diamond icons will appear to the right of the bar when obtained. They glow when they are ready to be used for crafting tools. Redstone does not appear when obtained. You will have to keep track of redstone yourself. However, you do naturally start with a good amount of redstone. When it comes down to a battle, iron will be your most valuable resource. You will need it in order to do a variety of moves, and then it is the strongest weapon class next to diamond. Managing your iron and keeping up with maintaining it is vital to playing Steve successfully. If Steve loses a stock, he will keep all of his resources, however it will reset his weapon class back to wood. If Steve is missing iron when respawning, it will replenish it up to a maximum of 3 ingots which is shown here. This makes it easy to quickly obtain iron tools, as you will need only one more iron ingot in order to craft them.
Steve Neutral B has two different functions, to build and to mine. Steve will mine for resources when on the ground or on a platform. It's important to move while mining to maintain the distance between you and your opponent to avoid easily being punished while trying to get resources. If you press shield and B at the same time, it will bring your crafting table to you. This can be done an unlimited amount of times and has no cooldown, even if it has been broken. Pressing B in midair allows you to build. Steve will always place one block directly underneath him. You can continuously place blocks horizontally by holding B. Another cool fact is that you can instantly transition from mining to building by jumping while still holding down the special move button. Dirt is the weakest block, decaying the quickest and will always be placed first when building. This is followed by wood, and then stone, and finally iron. The blocks will naturally decay while idle, however they will decay much quicker if a player or object is standing on them. Building has some basic uses such as extending a juggle or combo. It can sometimes block specific characters from recovering such as characters with teleporting recoveries or linear recoveries with no hitbox. Know that it is very inconsistent and can be outmaneuvered by your opponent. It is usually better to rely on ledge trapping which is something Steve excels at. Side special is Steve's minecart. The minecart takes one iron ingot to use and will use any base materials as the tracks. After initiating the minecart you can jump out of the minecart by pressing the jump button. The minecart has both a normal hitbox and a grab hitbox. The grab hitbox is only active when Steve is out of the minecart. Because of this, a vacant minecart cannot be shielded and will grab a grounded opponent. It is important to react accordingly and jump over it or roll past it. Steve can get a guaranteed up air string or up smash if the minecart grabs the opponent as they will always automatically jump out whether they mash out or not. If Steve has both redstone and gold, Steve can use the power rails. The minecart will move way faster and do significantly more damage. The power rails also make the minecart kill much sooner. Steve will get 4 uses of power rails per gold ingot. This lets Steve maneuver around the stage much quicker and can quickly apply pressure onto your opponent. It can also be used aggressively off stage for edge guarding. When jumping out of the minecart, you will still keep your double jump which will allow you to go super deep off stage. Steve's up special is the Electra, which is his primary recovering tool. It can only go in 4 diagonal directions and a straight 90 degrees left or right. Steve has a weak hitbox on his initial launch which is indicated by the firework particles. His recovery is very vulnerable and easily exploitable due to slow glide speed and lack of a lingering hitbox. The way the glider works is that you must glide downwards to gain speed. Using that momentum you can pop yourself upwards to bring yourself to the ledge. Pressing shield at the end of the glide will cancel the Electra and you pop slightly upwards to help grab the ledge. Here are some of the different ways you can use the Electra to recover to the ledge. Finally is Steve's dance special, TNT. It consumes a ton of resources and uses base materials starting with the least valuable. Pressing down special after the TNT is planted will place a redstone trail. After releasing down special, a pressure plate will be placed. If any player or item lands on it, it will detonate the TNT. TNT will naturally ignite and explode if no pressure plate is activated. It will automatically ignite after 4 seconds and explode after the next 4 seconds. TNT has a sweet spot closest to the block and a sour spot on the outer radius of the explosion. TNT does 16.8% to whoever activates the plate. This includes the enemy if they step on it. If you are hit by the explosion after an enemy triggers it, you will take the full 33.6% damage. TNT also does less damage if it explodes on its own, doing 24% to any player's caught in it. If the TNT block is attacked and moved away from the redstone, the redstone trail will break. Any attack to the TNT will contribute to reducing the 4 second ignition and 4 second detonation timer. Fire attacks are extra effective in reducing these timers, it all depends on the damage of the attack. This is a powerful tool for ledge trapping as it covers neutral getup, getup attack, and roll. You can use any item or object to activate the bomb using the pressure plate. This includes Steve's minecart, the anvil, or Link's bombs as an example. Be wary the TNT takes up a ton of resources and should not be spammed, otherwise you will find yourself running out of resources way too quickly. Now that we have the most complicated things out of the way, we can finally talk about more standard Smash character stuff. Steve's Jab, Forward Tilt, and Neutral Air are all the same move, and is a quick and weak sword poke that can be used to start and extend combos. Holding the A button will allow Steve to repeatedly swing. While holding down the attack button, you can freely jump, fast fall, and move. 
However, you cannot turn around. At low percents, you can string together multiple swings. However, this can be SDI'd and it will only be true for a few swings at around 10 to 15%. At mid percents, you can finish a string with a forward air, F smash, or dash attack. At higher percentages, you can combo a neutral air into a forward air as a kill confirm. It is the hardest to do with wood and works earlier the higher the weapon type. Diamond is the strongest and this combo can start working as early as 70%. This move is best used for punishing misplaced or whiffed attacks from your opponent in order to start a combo. Dash attack is a rush attack with Steve's pickaxe and is perfect for covering bad landings, punishing whiffed moves, and tech chasing. It is a great combo finisher, however it is not safe on block and can be easily punished. Up tilt and up air also share the exact same move. It has a small hitbox above him that is used to start powerful juggle combos. Up tilt only hits really large characters from underneath platforms. It won't reach smaller characters, therefore your platform pressure will be coming from up air instead. Typically, you will use a combination of up tilt and up air to catch landings and apply pressure underneath platforms. From there, you can start a juggle into multiple up tilts and up airs similar to Mario. You can extend these combos using platforms and by building underneath yourself in mid combo in order to gain another jump. You can finish off a juggle with a forward air, or you can place a block underneath you to do a forward smash or up smash. These combos become much easier if you use gold tools since your attack speed is significantly faster. Forward air is a fairly quick aerial that applies a lot of shield pressure and is safe on shield. It can set up a tech situation in low percents which can be followed up by a dash attack. At high percentages, the move will be able to secure kills very early with iron or diamond and has a sweet spot during the final few frames of the move. It is a great combo finisher and edge guarding tool. Back air is similar to forward air, but it is slightly slower with more power. It has a sweet spot at the end of the hitbox, and the move will also be great for applying pressure safely and for edge guarding. An interesting thing to note is that if you buffer a forward air or back air straight off the ground with a short hop, Steve will do a sword swing instead of using his pickaxe. It has the exact same damage and speed as his neutral air, but now Steve can do it as a back air. This is very important to Steve's kit, as it allows him to punish attacks at a shield much quicker than if he were to use his pickaxe. The short hop swing will also true combo into a forward air or back air. At high percents, this is a deadly kill confirm at the ledge. At wood, it works around 100 to 115% and works as early as 65% with diamond. Down air is Steve's anvil drop, which costs one iron ingot and is a very strong attack that can help Steve land as well as be used for edge guarding. The anvil has two hits when dropped, one while falling and one when it hits the ground. It does a ton of shield damage and can even poke through low shields. Steve will fall extremely fast with the anvil, however he can get off at any time by pressing jump. This is a great landing mix-up, however it should not be spammed as it's extremely easy to predict. It is also great for dropping onto enemies who are trying to recover. Down tilt is a long-lasting multi-hit move that can start combos as well as be used to edge guard. At low percentages, down tilt can combo into an F smash, forward air, neutral air, grab, and dash attack. You can also use it at the ledge to stuff out recoveries. Forward Smash is a great tool for hard punishing your opponent and catching a bad ledge getup. It is very strong and will kill extremely early, especially with Diamond. Steve will lunge forward during the attack, making it safer for ledge trapping since you have enough space to avoid a getup attack. Up Smash is going to be one of Steve's best kill options. The attack comes out extremely fast, is long lasting, and kills very early. It is perfect for catching landings, punishing attack on the platform, and punishing air dodges. It also has a starting hitbox in front of him, making it a great out of shield option or follow up after a parry. It is also a great combo finisher after a string of up tilts and up airs. Down smash is a pretty standard down smash that sends opponents horizontally and can kill fairly early. It can catch rolls on stage and from the ledge. It can also instantly detonate TNT, damaging you with it. Steve's grab is a tether grab with a medium range with a slow startup and a lot of end lag. However, his throws do have some utility. Down throw does a ton of damage so long as you have iron. Down throw will consume one iron block. If you do not have iron, the down throw will be significantly weaker. It can true combo into a dash attack, forward air, or a neutral air at low percentages. Even when out of combo percentage, down throw is good for getting in good damage so long as you have iron. Up throw is Steve's primary kill throw and will kill anywhere from 150 to 180% depending on the character's weight. Forward and back throw are mainly used to gain stage control and to allow time to set up a ledge trap or mine for more resources. Back throw can also be used as a kill throw at extremely high percents, however it can be easily DI'd and up throw will kill much sooner.
If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this to help me get my channel to 2,000 subscribers. This video took a very long time to make, so all the support is very much appreciated. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.